OpenAI has just released a new family of models, GPT 4.1, GPT 4.1 Mini, as well as GPT 4.1 Nano. All support up to a million tokens of context, as well as have a refreshed knowledge cutoff of June 2024. For GPT 4.1, it scores a 54.6 on the SWE Bench Verified Benchmark, which is a 21.4% increase over GPT 4.0 and 26.6 over GPT 4.5. Now, just as an aside, an interesting piece of this announcement is they also announced that GPT 4.5 is going to be deprecated from their API. And the reason they said for this is in order to free up some of those GPUs. So GPT 4.5 is both an incredibly expensive model and from what I understand, also a very large model. On a similar big jump on the instruction following, we have GPT 4.1 that scores a 38.3% or a 10.5% increase over GPT 4.0. If you have an application that does have a pretty beefy system prompt where you have a lot of instructions of what for it to do or not to do, these models are considerably better than GPT 4.0. Now, in terms of long context, now a great thing with this model is on the video MME, so you can pass in videos into the model as well. There is also a new state-of-the-art result of 72% on no subtitle categories, a 6.7% increase over GPT-40. Now, in terms of intelligence of the model, so the MMLU, we see these three models plotted against GPT-40 Mini as well as GPT-40. We can see for both GPT 4.1 Mini as well as GPT 4.1, these models do have an increased level of intelligence. Both of these models in terms of latency are going to be a little bit slower than GPT 4.0 Mini as well as GPT 4.0. Now with that being said, we have GPT 4.1 Nano. We do see that this model does fit in the lower quadrant where we have a fast model at a decreased level of intelligence. In terms of coding, GPT 4.1 is significantly better than GPT 4.0 at a variety of different coding tasks, including front-end coding, making fewer extraneous edits, and following the diff format reliably, ensuring consistent tool usage, and more. We can see on the Sweebench verified benchmark that this model is ahead of basically all of their models, including even O3 Mini. And then for 4.1 Mini, we do see that is considerably improved over 4.0 Mini as well. In terms of some other benchmarks, I was happy to see they included the ADAR Polyglot benchmark, and we can see the accuracy of 4.1 when compared to all of their other models here. They don't quite perform compared to the reasoning models of O1 as well as O3 Mini on high mode, but when compared to non-reasoning models like GPT-4.0, we do see a considerable increase. Even the 4.1 mini model on both the whole as well as the diff modes, we do see it outperform even GPT-4.0. That is great news because this is a model that is considerably faster as well as cheaper than GPT-4.0. And then for 4.1 nano, we see those results here have basically more than doubled on the GPT-4.0 mini benchmark. Another great thing with this model is in terms of front-end coding, human graders prefer GPT-4.1's websites over GPT-4.0's 80% of the time, and they found them both more functional as well as aesthetically pleasing. Just a quick comparison, we have GPT-4.0 on the left here with a flashcard app, and we have 4.1 on the right. And we can see on the right, we have some different colors, we have some icons, and we also have an animation on the front end for those flashcards. Whereas for GPT-4.0, it is a much more rudimentary front end. Now, in terms of instruction following, GPT-4.1 follows instructions more reliably across different formats, including negative instructions, ordered instructions, content requirements, ranking, and handling overconfidence. It has a 49.1 on hard instruction following prompts compared to 29.2 for GPT-40. They saw a significant improvement with GPT-4.1 outperforming GPT-40 by 10.5% on the multi-challenge benchmark. And in terms of the IFE eval, we have the score at 87.4 when compared to 81% for GPT-40, which shows better adherence to verifiable instructions. Next, in terms of long context, this has a million tokens of context. Now, a great thing with this is it also 
is priced the same whether you're using 10,000 tokens or the full million. Here is the needle in a haystack accuracy benchmark. They also announced that they did open source an MRCR benchmark for long contacts you can find on Hugging Face. I'll also link that within the description of the video if you're interested. And we can also see those results here. We have GPT 4.1, GPT 4.1 mini, as well as GPT 4.1 nano. And we can see all of those respective results and the accuracy continuing to hold quite well for a considerable size of tokens all the way to the million tokens of contacts. In terms of the vision benchmarks, we even have 4.1 mini outperforming 4.0, as well as 4.1, almost outperforming even 01 on high mode. The interesting thing with this is even 4.1 mini does outperform both 4.1, as well as GPT-40, as well as all of the other models in terms of accuracy. In terms of being able to access the model, all developer tiers are going to be able to try this out within the OpenAI Playground. Alternatively, you can get them from the API. In terms of the pricing, we have $2 per million tokens of input for GPT-4.1 with cash responses at $0.50 cents per million tokens, as well as $8 per million tokens of output. And for GPT-4.1 Mini, it is just $0.40 cents per million tokens of input. 10 cents per million cash tokens, as well as a dollar 60 per million tokens of output. And then finally, we have GPT 4.0 Nano at 10 cents per million tokens, two and a half cents per million cash tokens, and 40 cents per million tokens of output. Now, while these models aren't yet on artificial analysis, these models are basically going to fill the spectrum of price here. They're going to have the frontier that's going to be cheaper than Claude 3.7 Sonnet as well as having models that are going to compete with things like Gemini 2.0 Flash, as well as the Llama 4 scale model. Now, the great thing, if you are interested in trying out the model, you'll be able to try this out for free, both on Cursor as well as Windsurf. Windsurf was a part of their announcement today, and they mentioned that they are going to be providing this for free over the next week, as well as providing a meaningful discount to these models as well. In terms of a quick demonstration of the model, so here is when I ask for it to create a beautiful SaaS landing page. Now, the one thing that I found with the model is it does write out an awful lot of CSS. It looks like it might bias a little bit more towards CSS rather than Tailwind. With that being said, if I ask to convert it to Tailwind, I can see that it should have likely no problem to create something like that as well. Overall, that's pretty much it for this video. If you found this video useful, please comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.